Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Um, okay. I'm ready. You're ready? Yeah? Yeah. Om Magyan Timarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha kaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patitanam pavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're discussing the pastimes of Lord Krishna as described in the Krishna book and this evening we're on chapter number 39 Akrura's return journey Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, I have discussed with few devotees and we feel like, you know, we have done all this chapter. We should be doing chapter 41 maybe. No, we never did it. Really? Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, then we can do it. Um, and Jack Nasu Pakistan and I have what he sounds a car. She bought a good one, do it Akura. So we heard how Akura had come to Vrindavan. Kamsa had asked Akura to go to Vrindavan to bring Krishna and Balaram to Mathura. And don't he comes down here, some hair, put on here by Vrindavan, like a high power Krishna, like a Balaram, Mati Mathura. So in the last chapter we heard how Akrura arrived in Vrindavan and he was uh, greeted by Krishna and Balaram and taken to the home of Nanda Maharaj. So we'll read now how, what happens. Akrura got a very nice reception from Lord Krishna and Nanda Maharaj. They gave him a nice place to stay for the night. So after, so after Krishna and Balaram had fed Akrura, then they went to take their own supper. And Akrura was thinking about how every, he said all of his desires had been fulfilled. He had been thinking about coming to Vrindavan and meeting Krishna. And it had happened. He actually was so fortunate he could meet with Krishna. Akrura knows that Krishna is the husband of the goddess of fortune and he understood that Krishna was pleased with him. Uh, 
And he, he knows that Krishna can give anything for his pure devotee. But the pure devotee doesn't have any material desires. So after Krishna and Balaram take their supper, they came to say good night to their uncle Akrura. And at that time, Lord Krishna asked Akrura about Kamsa. How was Kamsa dealing with the relatives and friends of Krishna there? Uh, Krishna wanted to know what is Kamsa's plans, what's he planning to do? And Krishna told Akrura that he was very welcome, he was very happy that he'd come to Vrindavan. And he told, he told Akrura that all of his friends and relatives are very safe here in Vrindavan and they're very happy. And Krishna also said he was very sorry that this, this Kamsa, who was the, like the uncle, his, the uncle of Krishna, Kamsa was the uncle of Krishna, that he was uh, such a demon, that he was such a nasty person. And that because Kamsa was the head, he's in charge of the kingdom, so the whole government, the whole government of that kingdom was very bad. And he knew Krishna said he knows that the, 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 the citizens in the kingdom are not safe there. And Krishna gave the example about his own father, Vasudev. He said, My father has been suffering so much just because he's my father. And Krishna said, It was because of me, because of me, Kamsa killed all the other children of, Kams, of Vasudev. All the six sons of Vasudev were being born, and they'd all been killed by Kamsa. Hmm. So Krishna said, I, I'm, I think I'm very fortunate that you came, that you came as my friend, you've come to see me. And so, Lord Krishna asked Akrura, please tell me, what is the purpose of you coming to Vrindavan? Why have you come here? So Akrura, he is from the family of Lord Krishna, he is from the Yadu dynasty. Now, 
So Akrura told Krishna how Kamsa had tried to kill Vasudev, the father of Krishna. He tried to kill him. N Narada Muni had told had told Kamsa that Krishna was actually the son of Vasudev. And Narada Muni told Kamsa that Nan that Vasudev hid Krishna in the home of Nanda Maharaj. And then Akura also told Krishna that Narada met Kamsa and he he got Kamsa or oh, after Narada met with Kamsa, then Kamsa got Akrura to come to Vrindavan. And Narada Muni had told Kamsa about how Nanda Maharaj had changed Krishna. He brought Krishna from Mathura to Vrindavan. And it, it took away the girl. It took away the girl born to Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yasoda, and he left the boy there. So Narada Muni told Kamsa that the child who's going to kill you, he's actually alive and he's over there in the home of Nanda Maharaj. And all the demons that Kamsa had sent there to try to kill Krishna, they were all killed by Krishna. So then Akrura told Krishna, he said, that now Kamsa wants you to come to Mathura and he's arranging a festival. Mm -hmm. And he said, Kamsa's Kamsa arranging a wrestling match and he wants you and Balaram to come and take part in the wrestling match. And of course, Akrura knows he said, he told Krishna, he said, Kamsa is thinking that he will have you killed in this wrestling match. But actually Krishna is going to kill Kamsa. So when Krishna and Balaram heard about Kamsa's plans, they just laughed. They thought it was funny. They were not afraid at all. Mm. So then the Krishna and Balaram told Nanda Maharaj about how Kamsa was inviting them all to come to Mathura. They were the all the cowherd men and all the cowherd boys were all invited to come for the 
a special festival and there was going to be a, a Danur Yagna. Danur means a bow, the Yagna, the sacrifice of the bow. There was a big bow there and there was going to be a, fest, a, a Yagna for that bow. So Kamsa wanted that all these men, all the cowherd boys and the cowherd men, they should all come and attend this festival in Mathura. So when Nanda Maharaj heard this, then he, he told, oh, it's a very good. He said, we must, we must take some donations for the king. We'll take some, we'll pay taxes to the king. So he told them, go and collect all the milk and all different milk products that we have, like ghee and butter and cheese and yogurt and we'll take it to oh, Mathura. We'll take it to... We'll take it to Mathura to give to the king. So when Nanda Maharaj got the news about this and he told the cowherd man, he said, we will go tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning we're going to leave to go to Mathura. So they made arrangements for all the cows and the bulls to carry the bullock carts. But when the gopis heard about Akrura, that Akrura was taking Krishna and Balaram to go to Mathura, the gopis were really upset. They became full of anxiety and some of their faces became black and some of them they, they couldn't breathe properly. And their hearts were beating faster than they should be normally. And all their hair and their clothes all became loosened. Because they, they'd heard Krishna and Balaram are leaving to go to Mathura. Oh no, they didn't want this to happen at all. So some of the gopis who were working in the home, they were working in their houses, then when they heard this they just stopped work and they, they stopped doing anything. Just like a person when they die, they just they stop everything, can't do anything. So they became just like a dead person. And some gopis fainted just thinking about being away from Krishna. They fainted. And all they could think about was Krishna's smile, his beautiful smile, and their sweet talking with him. 
างสิ่งหนึ่งพวกเขาคิดได้อย่างเดียวก็คือการคำพูดคำจาที่วางของคริสนาแล้วก็รอยยิ้มที่หวานเช่นของคริสนา And they were thinking about how nice it was, how it was so beautiful to see Krishna walking just as he moved in Vrindavan. It was so wonderful. And he would make joking words, and he'd please everyone. Everyone was attracted to him. But when they were thinking about being away from him, being separated from him, then it was unbearable for the gopis to even think about that. So the gopis got together in groups, and they were they were just discussing. They were all absorbed in thought of Krishna, and tears were coming from their eyes. So then they began to speak. And they be, one of the gopis said, "Oh, Providence, you are so cruel." You don't know how to show mercy to others. It was your arrangement. That friends come together. But now you are by your desire. You are you are separating them, without their desire. You you are separating them without their desire. They want to be together, but you are causing them to be separate. So you, this is just like when we were children, we would play games, and the but the game has no meaning. It's just a toy. It's just a game. It has no meaning. So you you're just like that. You let us see beautiful Krishna. We saw we saw his beautiful blue curling hair, and his nice forehead, and his sharp nose, and his smiling. And now you, now you are causing to separate us from him. So providence, you are so cruel. But now the amazing thing is that you have come as a krura, and the word a krura, the name a krura means not cruel. We were thinking we were so fortunate that we could use our eyes to see Krishna's beautiful face. But 
But now you're taking away our eyes. You don't let us see Krishna. And I think this Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj, is also cruel. He always wants new friends. He doesn't like to keep friendship for a long time with anyone. And we gopis, we have become Krishna's servants. We left our home, we left our families, everything to serve Krishna. But he's neglecting us. He doesn't even look upon us. But we're, we are surrendered to him. And all these young women in Mathura, they will have the opportunity to, they will be able to see Krishna's arrival there and they will enjoy his smiling face and they will be able to drink the nectar of his beauty with their eyes. So the gopis say, we are afraid that when Krishna sees the beautiful faces of the young girls in Mathura, he will forget himself. Now usually Krishna is very determined and steady, but when he sees these beautiful girls in Mathura, we're worried that he may not be able to control himself. He will become controlled by them and he'll forget all about us because we're just simple village girls. So he won't be kind to us anymore. So we don't expect Krishna to come back to Vrindavan. Once he goes to Mathura, he will not want to leave the girls in Mathura to come back to Vrindavan. So then the gopis began to think about the festival, the functions in the city of Mathura. And they knew Krishna will walk in the streets and all the young women and ladies, they would see him from the balcony of their houses. So Krishna, he's in, in the family of the Yadu dynasty and all the Yadu dynasty, they're all living there in Mathura. Krishna, 
แล้วก็สังฆญาตของราชวงศ์ยาดูเนี่ยอยู่ที่ So they were all expecting. They were all anxious, waiting for the arrival of Krishna. And do they know Krishna is the resting place of the goddess of fortune, and he's the reservoir of all pleasure and transcendental qualities. รู้ดีว่าพระชาเนี่ยทรงเป็นที่พังนักทักพิงของเทพธิดาแห่งโชคลาภแล้วก็เป็นแหล่งกำเนิดของความสุขทั้งปวง So then the gopis began to speak bad about Akrura and they said this Akrura is not done is not being good to us it's done a lot of harm to us แล้วก็พวกโกปีเนี่ยก็เริ่มที่จะต่อว่าอักูระแล้วก็บอกอักูระว่าอักูระเนี่ยทำทำสิ่งที่ไม่ดีต่อพวกตน And they knew he was taking Krishna away from them, and Krishna is very dear to the gopis. ได้พาคริชนาที่รักของพวกนางเนี่ยพักพาคริชนาไปทำให้พวกนางเนี่ยทุกข์ทรมาน And Akrura, Akrura didn't even come to the gopis and apologize. He didn't even come and say, "I'm sorry, I have to take him away from you, but I'll bring him back." He didn't say anything. Akrura didn't come to the gopis and apologize. He didn't even come and say, "I'm sorry, I have to take him away from you, but I'll bring him back." He didn't say anything. Akrura didn't come to the gopis and apologize. He didn't even come and say, "I'm sorry, I have to take him away from you, but I'll bring him back." He didn't say anything. Akrura didn't come to the gopis and apologize. He didn't even come and say, "I'm sorry, I have to take him away from you, but I'll bring him back." He didn't say anything. Akrura didn't come to the gopis and apologize. He didn't even come and say, "I'm sorry, I have to take him away from you, but I'll bring him back." He didn't say anything. Akrura didn't come to the gopis and apologize. He didn't even come and say, "I'm sorry, I have to take him away from you, but I'll bring him back." He didn't say anything. Akrura didn't come to the gopis and apologize. He didn't even come and say, "I'm sorry, And just look, the gopi said, "See, he's already on the chariot. They're already getting let ready to leave." The gopi said, "He said, 'Do you see? They're already on the chariot. They're ready to leave.'" So, Krishna, this Krishna is not very intelligent, or he may be intelligent, but he's not very merciful. Do you see? คริชนาเนี่ยมาดูเหมือนว่าคริชนาเนี่ยไม่ฉลาดนะหรือว่าอาจจะฉลาดแต่ว่าไร้อริยธรรม And all the older men of Vrindavan, all the cowherd men in Vrindavan, they're also not very kind because they're also getting ready to go with Krishna. They're going to go to Mathura. แต่ไม่ใช่คิดเพียงคริชนาเท่านั้นแต่ว่าชายเลี้ยงโพทั้งหมดที่วินดาวัตก็ใจดำมากเช่นกันพอพวกเขาทั้งหมดก็พร้อมที่จะไปกับคริชนา They should stop Krishna from going. They should understand. We need Krishna here. พวกเขาเนี่ยแทนที่จะช่วยห้ามคริชนาไม่ให้ไปพอพวกเขาควรรู้ว่าเราเนี่ยต้องการคริชนาที่นี่ Even the demigods are not kind to us. They should have stopped Krishna from leaving. The gopis were praying to the demigods, "Let there be a hurricane, or let there be a heavy rainstorm. Don't let them go to Mathura. Keep them here." We will have to stop him ourselves. The gopi said, "We will just do it ourselves. Nobody else is going to do it. Let's stop him ourselves." We cannot live without him. He has to stay. And so they made the plan that they will obstruct, they will stand in the way, they will lay across the path, and they will hold the bulls. They won't let Krishna go. And the gopis remembered that we passed many long nights together dancing with Krishna. Now, the gopis 
But now if he's going to go away from us, we cannot live for even a moment. And they would remember how Krishna would come home in the evening from the fields with all the cows and his face would be covered with the dust from the cows. And Krishna would smile and play on his flute and he would look so kind at everyone. How can we ever forget him? If he goes away, then our lives will be finished. So the gopis became very anxious thinking about Krishna. They couldn't stop thinking, they couldn't stop crying, they were crying and they were calling out the names of Krishna. Oh Damodar, oh Madhava. So the gopis cried all night before Krishna. Then the next morning when the sun rose, then Akrura, after taking his bath, he gets ready to go to Mathura with Krishna and Balaram. And Nanda Maharaj and all the cowherd men, they're also going with them. They've got their carts full of all the ghee and milk and yogurt to take there to give to the king. And Krishna asked the gopis not to block the way, but still they blocked the way. They all stood there crying. They didn't want Krishna to go. But Krishna told, tells the gopis, he said, it's all, don't worry, I'm certainly coming back very soon. I just have some business there in Mathura and after I finish my business, I'm coming back. So in this way Krishna managed to, he, he left the gopis and the gopis, they, they, they just stood watching and they were looking at the chariot go in the distance and they were just stood, they were just like figures in a picture. They didn't move, they just stood there looking. So they were watching, they could see the chariot, then all they could see was the flag in the distance. And then after some time they couldn't even see the flag, all they could see was the dust which came up from the wheels of the chariot. All the gopis, they were, th they were sure, they said, 
we know Krishna is not going to come back. We don't think he's going to come back. So they, they, some of them just stood there, they just sat there for hours after Krishna left. They didn't move and others, they went home and they were very disturbed. Krishna had gone and they were, were thinking, when will we ever see him again? All they could do was think about the past times of Krishna and remember them. So Krishna and Balaram and Akrura, they're going past, they come to the river Yamuna and when they come to the river Yamuna, they decide, you know, they will stop and take bath there. So first Krishna and Balaram took their bath and washed their faces and drank some of the nice very clear water of the Yamuna. And so after they came back, then Akrura, Akrura took permission and he went to take his bath in the Yamuna. And so he was chanting his Gayatri mantra in the water. Half the, you know, his lower heart, part of the body was covered in the Yamuna water and he was standing in the, in the Yamuna river chanting Gayatri. And while he was doing it, he saw Krishna and Balaram in the water. So he was surprised because he was thinking they were sitting on the chariot. So he went back to see where, if they were there. And he came back and he saw that, yeah, they were on the chariot still. So he thought, well, maybe I didn't see them in the water. Maybe it was a mistake. So he went back to the river. And this time when he went back to the river, he not only saw Krishna and Balaram, but he saw many demigods also. And he saw that it was Ananta Shesha or Shesha Naga who was laying there with you know, Shesha Naga serpent. He, it's like the bed of the Lord and he has many hoods and each hood has a crown on it. It's, it's a form of Ananta Shesha. So Ananta Shesha has, he wears the blue garments, covered in blue garments, and his necks, his necks, the necks of the serpent were all white, and they were just like the snow in the mountain, on the top of the mountain. And 
Akrura could see that on the lap of Ananta Shesha, there was Krishna was sitting there in a four-handed form. And so what happened was Akrura, you see, he came back to the Yamuna and he saw Balaram had become Ananta Shesha and Krishna had become Mahavishnu. Right. So he, Akrura could see the four-handed form of Mahavishnu he was smiling, he was very beautiful, very pleasing to everyone and he was looking at everyone with a merciful glance. So there's a beautiful description of the body of Ananta Shesha and all the different parts of the body, how they're all so beautiful and attractive. And there was a belt around his waist and he was wearing a sacred thread across his chest. And he had bangles on his wrists and armlets on his arms. And of course he was carrying the four symbols of Lord Vishnu, the conch shell, the club, the disc and the lotus flower. And his chest has a special sign of Vishnu, has a special hair of Srivatsa. And round his neck he has the Kastuba gem. So Arjuna could see Mahavishnu surrounded by all of his intimate associates. Like the four, uh, Sanaka and Sanatana and the four Kumaras, they were there. And then people like Sunanda and Nanda, who are the associates of Mahavishnu in the spiritual world. And there were demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva there. And then the nine great sages were also there. And, and the eight Vasus were there, and great devotees like Prahlad and Narada, they were all there. And they're all offering prayers to the Supreme Lord. They're all offering prayers with very pure hearts and pure words. So Akrura could see all of this and when he saw all of this then his own devotion became awakened and he was overwhelmed with love for the Supreme Lord. Akura 
and he began to experience all types of ecstasy, shivering in his body. And for a, for a short time he was bewildered, but then he, he, he controlled himself and he bowed down his head before Mahavishnu. And so he folded his hands and he began to offer prayers to the Lord. Actually praying, offering prayers to the Lord, this is one of the nine kinds of devotional service. And we will see in the next chapter how Akrura offers wonderful prayers to Lord Mahavishnu. Okay, so that's the end of this chapter. We'll continue next week. Chapter 40, Prayers by Akrura. Okay, all right, are there any questions? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, I can see Sarapuna Mamadji hand. Oh. Mamadji Shaleha. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. My question is, Achana will translate, Guru Maharaj. Achana, I have a key one till now. เรามีงานกันแล้วก็เราก็เจอคนพูดถึงกันว่าแล้วอ่าเราก็บอกผู้หญิงแต่ผู้หญิงคนนึงว่าต้องเลือกฉลากเลือกผู้ชายนะอะ
is very bad, but still she is thick around with him, even after knowing that because she really loved him. But in material point of view, we we think that oh, this girl is very stupid. Why is she still loving that man? She should have moved on, something like that. And then one mother he pick up that. Uh, it's also like Krishna, even though Krishna knows that uh, Gopi loved him so much, but at the end, he didn't choose them. He go and marry some uh, Rajkumari from the Mathura. He didn't marry the Gopi. So in this case, uh, she just answered them that uh, it's a big difference between uh, common man and Krishna's stories. So could you please explain this? Because that girl will also be watching this well, picture. You have to understand that love in the spiritual world is very different from love in the material world. The feelings which the gopis have for Krishna is totally spiritual. Krishna has a spiritual body and the gopis also have spiritual bodies. So their feeling of love for Krishna, while it's uh, Madhurya Ras, you see, first of all, Madhurya Ras is not here in the material world. So what you call love in the material world, this is not like anything to, like in comparison to the feeling between Krishna and his devotees. So the Acharyas explain that the love which Krishna has for the gopis is the highest love because it's love without marriage. And this, in the spiritual world, that is the highest. But in the material world, that is the lowest. So, what is the highest in the spiritual world is the lowest in the material world. So, the, feel, the feeling between Krishna and the gopis because it's not because there's no marriage there it's more intense a, a, a greater intensity of love and there's more excitement and more emotion there and that's how the gopis want to love Krishna. And you know, you have to understand also who are the gopis, who are these people. One group of gopis, they are in the previous life, they were great sages who had seen Lord Ramachandra in the forest and they desired to have an amorous relationship with them. So Lord Ramachandra told them that I made a vow only to have one wife in this incarnation. But you come in my next incarnation as Lord Krishna and you take birth as gopis in Vrindavan, and then I can satisfy your desires. 
แล้วก็พระรามก็บอกว่าโอ้ชาติเนี้ยฆ่าไม่ได้แล้วเพราะฆ่าได้ถือสัตปฏิญาณว่าจะมีภรรยาคนเดียวแต่ว่าพวกเธอเนี่ยสามารถมาร่วมเล่นลีลากับข้าในอวตารต่อไปได้ And this is Lord Krishna allowed all these gopis who were great sages. They take part in Krishna's rasa lila and they dance with Krishna. So that pleasure is not given to even the goddess of fortune. No, the goddess of fortune is one. Of his, she's like the consort of Lord Narayan. But she doesn't get to join Rasa Lila. And she's always with the Lord, and sometimes the Lord is embracing other women. At that time, the goddess of fortune is a golden line on his chest. And when the Lord is on his own, then she assumes the form of a beautiful woman. So the goddess of fortune, she has to reciprocate with the desire of the Lord. So the greatest devotees of Lord Krishna are the gopis of Vrindavan. Because they sacrificed everything for the pleasure of Krishna. They would leave their homes, they'd leave their families, they'd go into the forest in the middle of the night. And they know they're young young women, and they know they're not married to Krishna, but they're so attracted to Krishna, and they want to please Krishna. So the, this woman who said these things about oh Krishna. He didn't marry the gopis. He went to other place, married other. She, she doesn't understand. She doesn't understand anything about the mood, of the rasa, the mellow of love and the pure love which is there between Lord Krishna and his devotees. And without understanding these things, you have no business to try to understand Krishna's rasa lila. You have not understood the transcendental nature of Krishna and the, the nature of his body and his, his pastimes. And you hear about rasa lila, you never understand it. And this is what happens. This woman, she is comparing it to mundane love in the material world. แล้วก็ถ้าเกิดว่ายังไม่มีความเข้าใจที่ถูกต้องแบบนี้เนี่ยก็จะทําให้เขาเนี่ยเอ่อนําเอาความคิดเหล่านี้เนี่ยไปเ
So there's a big difference between the love of Krishna and the gopis and what we see the love in the these loving, so-called loving relationships in the material world. They are just lust. And this lust, this is just like iron. But the loving dealings between Krishna and the gopis is like gold. So you tell that lady to read our Krishna book. You tell her to read the whole book carefully, three times. And maybe after something she might begin to understand something about the nature of Lord Krishna. Because it's clear from what she's saying, she doesn't understand anything about Krishna. And she doesn't know anything about the love of the gopis for Krishna. It's a very, very confidential thing. Yesterday, Bhujrad asked me, and we were, I was hearing uh, His Holiness Bhakti Purushottam Swami speaking about Radhastami. So he was telling at one past time, he said, at one point, he said, before Sukadeva Goswami was going to speak the Srimad Bhagavatam, all the gopis appeared in his heart and they all told him, look, we know you're going to speak Srimad Bhagavatam. You please don't speak about the confidential pastimes of Lord Krishna and the gopis. But Sukadeva Goswami said to all the gopis, he said, what? He said, this is, a, this is the heart of the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the most wonderful thing of the Srimad Bhagavatam. I have to speak the glories of the gopis and their love for Krishna. It's so wonderful that I have to reveal this. So all the gopis said, we didn't want you to speak it because there's so many foolish people, there's so many karma yogis, there's so many karma kandis, there's so many mayavadis, there's so many sahajas, so many people, stupid people, they won't understand the confidential pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So Sukadeva Goswami said, oh, but I'm sorry, I have to speak, this is such an important part of Srimad Bhagavatam. So then the gopis said to him, they said, all right, if you're going to speak, he said, then speak. but don't mention any of our names. So you see in Srimad Bhagavatam, they never mention the name of any gopi. 
จะเรียกแทนพวกกูปีว่ากูปีเฉยๆโดยที่จะไม่มีชื่อระบุ Even the name of Shrimati Radharani is not mentioned, not in the Bhagavad. Is that p u n i m a m a d i j i Do you understand this? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. That girl is just innocent, Guru Maharaj. Yes. And that time I cannot answer nicely or so. That's why. She's innocent, but she's thinking she knows something, and she doesn't know something. She doesn't know. She's ignorant, not innocent. She's ignorant. She got the whole thing wrong. She know she knows something about Krishna and the Gopis, but she's got it all wrong. She understands it in a mundane way. Yes, it is. Thank you very much, m a s No, it was a good question. Thank you so much for the question. Very nice. We have next question from Shaya m a d i g u m a r a Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, d a n a m a p r a n a m Please accept my humble obeisances. o k o r i t u s i n a p a p u p a n k a m t h a m Hom Pina Kha Ajana. Pi k e r d i y i n Guru Maharaj p u d w a คนที่เกิดในดินแดนบินดาวันเนี่ยค่ะถ้าเกิดถ้าเราเคยเกิดในดินแดนบินดาวันแล้วอะก็ถ้าเกิดว่าชาติต่อไปจําเป็นจะต้องมาเกิดในโลกวัตถุเนี่ยก็จะไม่เกิดในดินแดนอื่นอีกทีเนี้ยพี่มีความสงสัยว่าในกาลียุคเนี้ยผู้คนที่เป็นบาวาสีถึงแม้ว่าเกิดในบินดาวันแต่ว่ายังคงเป็นหลงอยู่ในมายาเป็นมายาวดีอะค่ะหรือว่าเขาไม่เคยเรียนดูเรื่องสคริปเจอร์อืมอย่างเหมือนกับว่าบาวาสีทุกคนนะก็ไม่ได้หมายความว่าเป็นสาวกที่เรียนรู้เอ่อความรู้ทางพระเวทอย่างเงี้ยค่ะถ้าเขายังหลงติดเป็นมายาวดีอย่างเงี้ยค่ะแล้วเขาจะเป็นต้องเกิดมาในโลกวัตถุอีกเขาจะไปเกิดที่ไหนหรือว่าเขาจะไปไหนถ้าเขาทิ้งร่างนี้ไปแล้วอะในเมื่อชาตินี้เขาไม่ได้ปฏิบัติอะไรไม่ก็ไม่โอเคขอบคุณค่ะอะไรก็เช่นเอ่อ so her question is she heard you mention about the people who uh, get a chance to be born in b r i n d a v a n That their next life will also they will get a chance to take birth again in Vrindavan, like that. Her question is, how about the people in Kali Yuga that if they take uh, birth in Vrindavan but they are not devotee of Krishna, they are Mayavadis, they are s a h a s y a or they're just doing uh, living their material life. So is that? Uh, Is that a guarantee for them that next life they will be a devotee and get to be born in Vrindavan, or they will go somewhere else? Well, it depends. You know, if they're not devotee, then they won't go back to Godhead. ถ้าเกิดว่าเขาไม่ใช่สาวกนะคะเขาก็จะไม่ได้กลับไปที่โลกพิษ They may be born in the holy dam, but they, they don't see the holy dam. ว่าจะได้เกิดที่สถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์แต่เขาเนี่ยไม่ได้เห็นถึงความสำคัญของสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์เนี่ยถูกปกคลุมสำหรับคนอย่างพวกเขา There's a covering for people who are not devotees. They may be, they may appear to be in the holy dam, but actually they're not in the holy dam. The whole holy dam is covered to them. By the material energy. เพราะว่าสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์นี้เนี่ยไม่ได้ไม่ได้มีการเปิดเผยให้กับทุกคนจะถูกปิดบังไว้อยู่แล้วสําหรับคนที่ไม่ได้เป็นสาวกเนี่ยคือจะไม่ได้สถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์จะไม่ได้เปิดเผยให้กับพวกเขาได้รู้ Without the mercy of the pure devotees, without the mercy of Krishna, we cannot see the holy dawn. ปราศจากพระเมตตาของพระปราศจากพระเมตตาของสาวกของพระเจ้าเนี่ยเราไม่มีคุณสมบัติที่จะได้เห็นสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์ Just like seeing the form of Krishna when you see the deity, you have to see with the eye of devotion. We don't just see with our material, physical eye. เหมือนกับการเห็นพระปฏิมาของเราก็เหมือนกันแต่เวลาเราเห็นพระปฏิมาเนี่ยเรามองพระปฏิมาเราจะต้องมองด้วยความรักและการคิดตนที่เรามี
ดวงตาที่เป็นความรักและการมีตนไม่ใช่ดวงตาที่เป็นวัตถุโซ่ somehow they may have had some good fortune that they've taken birth in the holy dam but if they don't take advantage of it then they won't go back to Godhead But you have to see also what is their consciousness. You know, maybe they're born in a holy dam. Maybe they never do any sin. So they're in the mode of goodness. So they get a high birth. Can go to heavenly planets. But they don't have the desire to go back to Godhead, so they wouldn't be happy to go back to Godhead. They don't take an interest in hearing and chanting. If they're not interested to hear and chant, then they won't like to go back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. Is it okay, Shaya? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand. Thank you for your answer, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Next one. question from Nimai Prabhuji. Yes, Nimai Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam, Guru Maharaj. Dandavat Pranam, Prabhuji. प्रभु मेरो प्रश्न जो आगे महाराज ले कि अरे सजिया बंदी बन्नु जो निजामाया बादी उरुषन सजिया उरुषन क्या है हमरो बारे में नौ बंदू बन्ने को भी अलग राइमे के बार बार सुनिं जा बाक्ता उरुष सारल लूनु पार जा बनी है सारल रस सजिया में क्या अंतर जाए सोसोती रुंतियों की प्रभु आज उठ आज उठ आह ओके सारा बनेगा क्या बोलेंगे सारा बनेगा लिया अपना आज उठ साजिया रा सारा में क्या अंतर जा बनने बाकी तो उन्हें क्या बनने जा नहीं सारा आज उठ Okay, Guru Maharaj, maybe I, I will try. Okay, his question is, uh, here, when you explain that we should not uh, tell them about this uh, confidential uh, love of Gopi to all, but sometimes we also say that devotee have to be simple or also like uh, mercy, something like that. So what is the difference between Sahasya and Simple? Yes, Well, Maharaj. the Sahaja is one who takes everything very cheaply. And they think that they can also be like gopis. They also think they can be like gopis and they think they can also dance with Krishna and they can enjoy, or they can even be Krishna and enjoy with the gopis in the bushes of Vrindavan. So Sahajas, they will imitate, they will take the position of Krishna. Uh, แล้วก็จะคิดเอาตรงนี้น่ะมาเป็นสิ่งที่ง่ายๆแล้วก็จะคิดเอ่อลอกเรียนแบบคิดว่าตนเองเนี่ยมีคุณสมบัติที่จะ
And then someone's simple, so then keep it simple. Keep it simple. Speak the basic philosophy. We're not the body. We have to control the senses. We don't have to speak about gopi bhav. We have to repeat as we hear it from the acharyas. We don't make it up ourselves. Just simply repeat as it's presented in the words of our spiritual teacher. If we try to give our own meanings to something like this, then we'll certainly commit offences. So, we want to understand the basic philosophy. We want to understand everything from the beginning. So when Prabhupada writes about the gopis and even when we read Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna does Kavi Raj writing about Radha and Krishna, he explains very clearly that the dealings between the Krishna and the gopis is not material. There's no material lust there. แต่ตอนนี้สรุปว่าส่งอธิบายนะคือเวลาท่านจะให้คําอธิบายเกี่ยวกับพวกเอ่อความรักของเอ่อราดาคริชนาเนี่ยมันไม่ได้เป็นอ
They gave up. Yeah. They gave up all kinds of material wealth to go and live in Vrindavan. And they studied the scriptures, and they wrote scriptures, and they described everything for us in a very wonderful manner, so that we could properly appreciate the dealings of Lord Krishna. But we get these people who don't know anything, they hear a little bit about it and they take the wrong meaning and then they twist it and they uh, change it and they give totally the wrong impression to people. Uh, that was why that Jiva Goswami, Jiva Goswami, he was the youngest of the Goswamis, that when he was preaching, it, that so many people had difficulties to understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, that in his writing, he had Radha and Krishna married. Because this concept of the dealing between Radha and Krishna and the gopis, which is without marriage, is so difficult for people's minds to accept. He decided it would be easier just to get them married. Okay. Okay, Guru Maharaj, we got two more. Oh, really? Two more devotees. Okay, Bhakti, wait for Yamadaji, please. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, about the question earlier, I remember one of the classes you have mentioned that um, Krishna never left Vrindavan. It was Vasudev Krishna that left Vrindavan. So I was thinking, why was that not part of the answer that was given just now? Well, that's another way of presenting the so what happened to Krishna? I explained that Shamsundar Krishna hid himself in the hearts of the gopis. And in this way he stayed in Vrindavan. He hid himself within the hearts of the gopis. <laughs> But the first question, you mean in relation to the first question which Sarat Purnima had asked? You see, Sarat Purnima Madhiji was asking the question about the lady who inquired you know, she was comparing Krishna, Krishna, she said Krishna didn't marry the gopis, she went off to Dwarka and married these other women in Dwarka. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was saying like this, you know, that, uh, what was it, what was it, she said? Yes, yes, ma'am. And she was like the love of that, we should not be stupid by loving one man, even the man is not loving. 
Oh, right. Yeah, the man doesn't love. <laughs> so. Anyway, there, the Sham, Shama, Sham Krishna never left. So, uh, for, uh, as a follow up question, um, Krishna hid himself in the hearts of the gopis. Is it because love in separation is more intense? Yes, that's true. The feeling of separation is greater. And, but the, the, the separation is meant to lead to union. It, sh the, it shouldn't just be always separation, there should be union. There should be the time when Krishna actually comes back to be with the devotee. Mm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. If there's separation and no union, then that's, that's, that defeats the purpose. The, the separation is that feeling which will bring about the union, that we become anxious to be with Krishna. Is that all right, Veda Priya? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It's, it's good. Okay. We still have one question more, is it? Yes, Guru Maharaj, from Yogita. From Yogita, yeah. And Krishna Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances, Gurudev. All of us, you should have a balance during that time. Gurudev, uh, the one thing that I really get, uh, uh, I'm curious about is, Radhari's love is pure love. She says uh, that even if you love me or you hurt me, I'm pleased in either ways because you are pleased. But Gurudev, the gopis are at times complaining that Lord Krishna is not thinking about them. And they're not happy then. So, I mean, how do I take this? How do we look at this part then? Is that still that they're expressing love by saying such sentences? Or, I mean, I don't know how to look at such statements, Guru. Really. Because yes, they're putting themselves first, not the pleasure of Lord Krishna first. Well, that's so, their, their ecstasy where they start to criticize Lord Krishna. In their ecstasy of love for Krishna, they, they criticize him. Okay. And they're, they're, the Acharyas have analyzed the different criticisms, just like when Radharani was addressing the bumblebee, and she was mm -hmm. criticizing the bumblebee that you're the unreliable servant of an unreliable master, and so many other criticisms. And, and so the Acharyas explained that these are all different kinds of ext ecstatic ways of, in which uh, the lover addresses her beloved, or the beloved addresses her lover. Mm -hmm. But you find fault with someone, you know, it's out of in the in 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 intense love and attachment to them which makes the gopis very, say these kind of things. Mm. But then when the bumblebee disappeared, then Radharani became very worried that, oh, please, maybe if you, oh, please don't go there, don't tell Krishna what I was saying. If you tell Krishna what I was saying, he'll feel very sorry. Mm. So, it's the nature of the devotee that they, they cannot stop talking about Krishna. And at the same time, they're critical, finding so much criticism of Krishna, but they just can't stop talking about it. So I guess this criticism also pleases the Lord. Because it's the all Lord. absolute, yeah. To Krishna, ah. it's all absolute. Got it, got it, got it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Got it. So we thank Archana very much for her translation. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you.
thanks to you. Did we get we your Pali translation tonight? Yes. Yes, Ramesh, by Antarango Bhakti. Oh, wonderful. Is he out now? Is he finished his... Yes. Yes, yes, he is back. How oh, good. Yes. Wonderful. Well, so my thanks to him and thanks to you and thanks to all the devotees for their questions and their participation. And I look forward to be with you all next week. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare